Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have another shop talk video and today's video is going to be how does my shop deal with uh, secondhand supercars or cars that at one point in time were very prestigious and very expensive but now the cost of them have declined and they are coming into a shop like mine for regular services uh, by you know regular people that uh kind of don't know what they got themselves into when it comes to owning a car like this because the repairs could be a little bit extreme. So that's gonna be the topic for today, guys. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. All right, guys, so today's topic is uh, basically a real life scenario that happened uh, to one of my customers. Now, one of my customers picked up a older Mercedes E-Class, and not just any E-Class, it is a uh, E55 AMG. For those of you that know, it's basically a four-door sedan with this really huge motor shoved in there, and this motor is supercharged. Um, and if you know about it, you guys know that they're pretty cool cars. I'll be honest with you, I even have a thing for these cars. If I can find one, uh, dirt cheap, I don't mind picking one up and uh, dealing with the headaches because, you know, it's what I do. I fix things. But uh, either way, uh, this customer, this car for him was always his dream car. He finally was able to acquire it because from this thing costing, let's say, 100000 brand new. Um, and, you know, in today's market, it's kind of like in between because it's not new enough for people to care about it. And it's not old enough for it to become a classic just yet. So it kind of falls in the middle. And people are starting to pick these things up for pretty cheap. Um, I don't know if he paid like five or ten grand or something small like that, which for this car, for what it is, I think that's a pretty good deal because it's it's insane amounts of power and fun. Uh, this thing's a bracket, literally, at least for its age. Uh, now, this one is an older one. Um, I, it's early 2000s, and uh, he brought it into me. He's like, hey, you know, I just bought this. Uh, I want to do an oil change and get it looked over and, you know, fix whatever needs to be fixed if it needs anything. And he mentioned a couple of things that he knew were wrong with it that he wanted priced out. Um, and I was like, okay, not a problem. He, so he dropped it off. Um, I look it over. The car needs valve cover gaskets. Uh, it needs a trans service. Uh, it needs an oil change. And, you know, just a few little minor things. Uh, nothing really that big but in reality when you add the price of the parts that we needed the fluids uh, and the labor times to do these things it gets a little bit astronomical so i call the customer up and i was like hey okay so the oil change is gonna be you know again i'm not gonna actually give out the numbers that i had but let's say i call them up and a typical oil change is fifty dollars i told them hey the oil change is gonna be 120. Um, I told them the valve cover gaskets, uh, you know, let's say for a typical car, it's around 500 for this car, they were 1200 and you know, as you guys can tell, these services are more for this type of car. Now that's not what these services actually cost. Just using rough examples. Cause I don't even remember the numbers. This was uh, a month or two ago, uh, when this happened. So the guy, after I explained everything that I found and gave the prices on it and then gave him a total was just shell shocked. He's like, there's no way. And I'm like, no, that's what it is. And I was like, listen, if you don't believe me, call around and get some prices. So he proceeds to call around to a few shops, guys. And to be honest with you, blind quoting is never the best thing to do. And I have a video explaining what blind quoting is. But to give you guys general ideas, basically calling a shop with a vehicle and asking for prices over the phone uh, never really works out too well. Uh, what wound up happening when he did this, I think he called like six or seven shops and most of them just didn't give him a price. Some of them told him, bring the car in, we got to check it out ourselves because we're not going to take your word for it. And other shops just gave him prices based on the car and everything and what they charge. And it was just, you know, pretty extreme, pretty expensive. And, uh, you know, somehow I still was very competitive with pricing because uh, he even called a shop that is not too far away from me that, I mean, they do horrible work for really great prices, guys. I mean, come on. If the price is so low, you're expecting the best, which is crap in this shop's stance. If you guys didn't notice, I'm just uh, joking around there. But, yeah, he called a shop that is not too far from me that does absolutely terrible work for pennies on the dollar. And even they were more expensive than me. <laughs> like, it's just funny. But uh, he calls me back and he's like, so this is the situation, it gives me all the info. And uh, after that, he's like, I don't have the money. I don't know what to do with this thing. And I was like, well, listen, uh, 
your main issues are basically like three issues. These are the first three things I would take care of. But if you continue to let a leak, like a valve cover gasket continue on, you never know, it could leak into tube seals or just, you know, leak on the headers, possibly start a fire. You never know, you know, it's a lot of scenarios. So I told them, I'm like, this is what needs to be done. These other repairs, you could probably let them slide, but the more you let them slide, the more issues you're gonna have, you know, because this can cause this, this, and so on. And he's like, okay, you know what? He's like, can I come to the shop? Is the car still on the lift? Can I just like see some things? I was like, sure, not a problem. And he lives like five minutes away. So he walked over here and showed him the car. And I mean, the guy, I felt bad for him. It's, it's in this line of work, guys, they don't really prepare you. Now, I know it's not really hard, but you know, if you have some sort of heart and you're a mechanic and you work this field and you have a customer that you're giving them bad news about their car. It's hard not to feel bad for someone that's just shell-shocked and, you know, like utterly pissed off and probably to the point where this guy probably wanted to cry because his dream car that he just bought and he probably spent a good chunk of money of his savings on it because, you know, he's a regular working guy uh, just like me and everyone else, uh, I would assume. And, you know, he works hard for his money and he just spent all this money and he has nothing really that, you know, he can be happy about. He just has more issues. And, uh, you know, I just felt bad. It is what it is, but, you know, not nothing I could really do. Uh, I can't really work for nothing, you know. So it's like I feel bad, but, you know, that's how life is. What can I do? Can't really, you know, extend the limb there and fall off of it for myself. So I just told the guy, listen, uh, I'm like, to be quite honest with you, even though I know you love this car, I'm like, if you add up all the repairs, and let's say you assume all the other repairs that it's going to need in the future, I mean, you're realistically looking at a lot of money to own this thing. I'm like, I don't know if that's worth it to you or not. I mean, I'm not in your wallet, you know your finances, but just to give you a heads up, in the future, you could be looking at this amount. Uh, and this car is not inherently this bad, guys, but I guess the previous owner that had the car just didn't take care of it, and this guy, got his problems you know so that guy made his money beat the crap out of the car drove it sold it got some money and then you know passed it on to this guy with all the problems and I explained that to him like you know you just bought a problematic car typically even though these things can be expensive to fix later on I'm like you typically don't have all these little issues this car has been neglected and it just happens to be what it is and the guy you know just like okay he's like um, can I just you know pay for the inspection and you know i'll let you know what i'm gonna do and uh, i remember after that i didn't hear from him for like a month or two and then he calls me up he had acquired some parts uh himself and i did some work for him but he could never really fix everything on there and the second time he brought it in one of the issues had become a lot bigger and started affecting a major component and uh it just pretty much it was done from there um, and the issue that happened was the trans uh pan was really rotted out leaking fluid and uh, you know it just sprung the leak he accidentally drove it with no fluid in the trans and the transmission after we uh did the repair on it it just always had issue shifting it was always like jerking so he burned up the trans i would think uh, and after that uh, i don't know what happened to the car um, he got another car i think he might have traded it in or maybe sold it i don't know exactly but you know he, he got rid of the issue to say the least so this is uh, what the whole point of the video is, guys. When you buy a really expensive car when it came out in the modern world, and let's say it's about 10 years old and you get it at an affordable price, sometimes the savings that are to be had when you buy it are actually going to be wound up being lost when you're doing the repairs. Now, it's not the same for every single car, but it can be pretty costly. Now, I've had a lot of cars in my shop that are of this nature. Um, I have a customer that owns a few of these nice older exotic cars that I think are probably the best examples out there because the new stuff is kind of boring to me. The older line of Mercedes and things like that, their AMG cars are pretty awesome. I really like them. And I have a customer that owns quite a few of these, but he's constantly maintaining them. He takes good care of them. Therefore, they're not breaking down on them and they're not... Uh, being neglected to the point where he has to put a bunch of money in it at once you know he's taking a step by step and that's just the nature of the car uh, no car is perfect it's always going to need something but if you don't do a repair now and you let it pile up and it gets more and more and more it's going to add to more money later on 
Uh, so when you buy a secondhand car that was very expensive back in the day, guys, uh, just know even though the price of the car may be down, the parts and the labor, because they could be more complicated, are always necessarily the same price as when that car was new. So the price of fixing a car doesn't go down with the price of the car, if that makes sense. So if you buy a car for 100 bucks, a uh, brake job is still going to be three to four hundred dollars on it. That price doesn't go out with the price of the car because it's lower, if that makes sense. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys, because I could ramble on about this. So uh, with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.